What's going on, Michael? Yeah, I'm back at it for sure. How you doing, Michael? How's your day going? Oh, you're the flower horn guy. Okay, okay, okay. Carl, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all come into the chat. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all come into down. the chat. I appreciate it. Good, man. Just recorded my first YouTube video yesterday, working on editing it. Okay, okay, Michael. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I need to uh, make sure, put your channel down in the comments so we can uh, so we can follow you so we can go subscribe. Colin, what's up? Tuning in from work. Okay, Colin, don't get in trouble. It's all good. Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all when y'all uh, when y'all hit the chat. Come on, eight people, four likes. Let's get it. My God, I've been wanting to do so for so long, man. I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you pulled the trigger on it, Michael. So that you pulled the trigger on it. Um, it's nothing better than having something else running consistent. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about, man. Good looking, y'all. Appreciate all of, all seven of y'all. But um, yeah, that's why I say, man, try to monetize your, your life any way you can. Oh, there we go. Got an eighth one. Try to monetize your life any way that you can, and you really will not regret it. You know, it's like having, it's like planning for the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know what it would do. That's what I'm talking about. Ten likes. You never know what it will do. You know what I mean? So while you're still working, doing your hobby, whatever the case may be, and you start doing monetizing on your videos or, you know, the things that you like to do, your hobbies, your interests, your work, whatever, monetize on that. You never know what it changes. What did it, what did it turn into? What did it transform into? You know, some people, they blow up like this. You know what I mean? A hundred thousand subscribers will change your life. You know what I mean? A million is like it'll change the life of your family. So just start doing it. You know what I mean? I think that's why I try to encourage everyone to start doing it. Find a way to monetize your life any way that you can. But um, where we at? D Mass, what's good with you, man? I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Yes, hit the like button, y'all. They've been doing it. Hit that like button. We got two more people. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Cody, what's up with you, man? What's up with you, man? And I appreciate that cash app last night. I was able to get it, and I appreciate you. Definitely. Robert, what's up? Rob, how you doing, man? What's good? Day for sure productive, man. My day was very productive. I uh, I got another video for y'all. Got another video for y'all. I went. That's why you know the topic talking about the pine. I um, I went to uh, Koi Enterprise in Sacramento. If y'all don't know about Koi Enterprise, check him out. Check him out. Um, he does he does live sales every Wednesday night. So it used to be on auction. You know what I mean. Now it's like just a selling of the fish online. And uh, he does it every week. So he'll ship it to you wherever you are. they real legit. So I went down there. I didn't get no koi today. I slid down there. I got some plants. You know, I was talking about how my pond been turning green on me. Also got a got a plethora of information between his mom and him, you know, and Anthony. So um, got a better understanding of why my pond probably gets a little green after rain. He was saying how the rainwater is acidic. So it's messing with my pH. So that would kind of make my water get a little green. So I bought some pine plants to help with the natural, you know, remedy of this. And then I will, um, you got to catch the video, y'all. Y'all got to catch the video. I, I'm, uh, I finished it. I got to edit it and I put it out to y'all. I put it out for y'all tomorrow. But um, Mark, what's good with you, Mark? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I appreciate you for catching my videos, man. I appreciate you. Definitely appreciate it, man. We miss you too, man. You know, the support is real, man. I got real, I got real supporters, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the fake ones, man. Y'all the y'all the real ones, man. Straight up. You know, I got the best ones. You know what I mean? Um, Cody, I don't know why I don't know. Get the notification that you are. I don't know either, Cody. I don't know either. Um, but you know, we we doing this, we doing this. If not every day, we're gonna do this pretty often, Cody. You you kind of like convinced me. You said that you like the lives. I like the lives. I definitely feel like y'all enjoy these lives. So you know, in the middle of putting out these videos, we are gonna try to get these in as often as possible. But um, yeah, whether you catch it in real time or even catch it afterwards, I appreciate that support. Real talk, I appreciate that. So the fact that y'all do tune in, I didn't think I was gonna get that many people tuned in because it's early. I wanted to get it in early because. You know, sometimes I do them a little late. 
I run out of time with the family and things like that, but so I wanted to get it out early. Also, I'm feeling kind of good. Like I said, the pond is looking amazing, y'all. I was so ready to get pond plants in there, and um, we had to wait until the weather got good. I called. They said they got some good pond plants. Went on down there. I bought about seven of them. Got some more mosquito fish. Got a couple of tadpoles going to pond. <laughs> so, yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together. Happy about that. So, it's um, where we at? Where we at? Michael, so true, man, especially in the world we live in. Mm-hmm. No problem, bro. Got to look out for the homies. The only person we ever sent to just keep it real. I appreciate that, Cody. That's respect, man. Respect, man, for sure. For sure. That, yeah. Um, Michael, I can throw a nice hunk of copper in there. Ask a plumber if they have any extra. What would, what would the copper do to the pond? You know, also um, to, to kind of like raise that pH level, you know, cement. You know what I mean? So I do got some cement in there. Got a nice big paver in there, you know, for the fish to hide under. So I think it's just going to be me. Um, like I said, I got the plants natural way, you know, wild plants, because the plants will all compete the algae for the nutrients, right? You know, the sun obviously is going to really make it, you know, get to the green stage. But um, that UV, uh, the UV sterilizer, I'm going to add one of those in line when I, when I make my filter for that pond. So I'm not really stressed about a fish looking good. You know, it's, it's going to be easy to remedy. It's not going to be that bad. It's not looking crazy like how, how it could look. It's not looking like that. You'll see in the video. You'll see in the video. The mass. I have a 40-gallon freshwater planet with about 20 guppies and neon tetras and driftwood. Been established for four months, and over the last the last week, the water is cloudy with light green. Um, I'm surprised that it's not getting the tannins from that driftwood. You know, sometimes the tannins from the drift from the driftwood will start turning that water brown. Um, you know, uh, that's that's what that's what I'm thinking. Maybe it's gonna turn brown on you. Hopefully that's not the case. If you don't if if you don't want your water to have like tannins in it from the driftwood, you might have to boil that driftwood and put it in another container and keep on just rinsing it off over and over again, basically letting, letting it sit in there after a few days or a week, dump out the water, do it again until it starts running clear. It will go clear on you. Hopefully that's not the case though. All right, Henry, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing amazing. As a matter of fact, great day. Been a great day. I hope yours has been as, been good as well. Emas water parameters are good, and I do weekly water changes with canister filter, no algae on glass. Any ideas? Yeah, Dmas, I think it's that. I think it's that driftwood. I think it's that driftwood. Let's see what you say. I've been doing water change to try and get the water clear, no siphoning. Yeah, I think it's that driftwood, Dmas. Yeah, that's what that's what I would think. Unless I was able to see your aquarium, and still then it's kind of like hard to gauge. You know what I mean? All right, uh, um, Mike Hubbard. I've been sick lately, so I haven't been able to catch the videos. I'm back through, bounced back better than ever. I got to big COVID. Oh shit! And stomach virus was down for a couple months. Damn, Mark. I'm glad you're good. That ain't ain't no joke. I'm glad you're good, man. Yeah, that's an amazing thing. Yeah, be careful out there, man. That COVID is no joke. COVID is no joke. AJ Quest, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? All right, Cody. Hey, bro, you've been pushing us to monetize, so I got to motivate you to keep going. Yeah, man, that's what it's about. Motivate me. I try to motivate y'all. So, yeah, that's how we do this. Make sure y'all hitting that like button when y'all step into the chat. We got 20 people, 17 likes. Let's get it. JB Aqua Pets, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? I appreciate you for sliding through. Michael Caesar, shoot for about seven to eight hours of strong lighting on your 40 gallon. And I wouldn't do water changes so often. And so don't siphon each water change. It can take out much bacteria, cause and bloom. There you go, D Mass. You got some, you got a uh, a recommendation from Michael Caesar. I've been doing water changes to try to get the water clear. Yeah, I agree with it. No, you definitely don't want to do a ton of water changes on it. Sometimes when we have those issues, we cause more harm than help. You know what I mean? So um, if you did a large water change on it, there's no way that I would do another one. So I'm telling you, it might be the driftwood. Man, I put it to you like this. I'm going to show you all an aquarium. I'm going to show you all one of my aquariums. It's, it looks black water. I had driftwood in there. I had the driftwood in there. It turned T brown, T brown. 
I took out the driftwood over a week ago. Doing my water changes, but I don't. I haven't doing been doing any excessive water changes. So changing the water, it's still cloudy, y'all. It's still cloudy. I mean, I know I could do a hundred percent water change and clear it up like this, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just that to just tell D Mass that even when you remove the driftwood, it could still create you a little tint to that water. My 225 has a little tint to the water. Yeah, it's, it might be that driftwood. You gotta take that driftwood out. Try that. Try taking out the driftwood. Do some water changes or do a water change when it's time to do a water change. And over time, gradually, that tank should clear back up. That's my uh that's my that's my that's my thought process on it. We use driftwood in our pond to make the pH softer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Driftwood will soften up, soften up that um that pH. Yep, that's a fact. It's one method, one natural method to lowering that pH. Uh, Henry just got home to my tank leaking all over my living room and wood for oh, oh my goodness, Henry. Oh shit. You know, that's one of the one of the nightmares, man. That's like one of our, our, our worst fears in a way. You know, you come home and all of a sudden your tank is just leaked out on the floor. Hopefully all your fish are good though. Hopefully all your fish are good. And uh hopefully it didn't cause too much damage. You know, wood for it. Ah man, I feel for you, man. You know, that's why we got one tank in the house. We got the 175 gallon. That's it. All the, <laughs> I stay flooding the sumps in the fish room. But again, it's concrete. Open the garage door, they dry out. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the struggle. I think we, I think everybody here know the struggle. All right, D-Mass, I did add a new piece about two weeks ago, but the LFS said it was aquarium ready. And already boil shaking my head. I'm about to take it out tomorrow. Yeah, that's that's the best thing that you could do. That's the best thing you could do. And um, man, even if even if the driftwood was aquarium ready, if it ever dried out, kind of sometimes it start to process all over. You know what I mean? The driftwood that turned my small 20 gallon dark, it was in the aquarium. One piece was, the other piece wasn't. You know, the pieces together just like I said, tea color. Some people like the black water tanks. You know, I can't really even see the fish that's in there. So I'm not really a fan of the blackwater tanks. All right, Michael Caesar. Hi, hi. Yep, it's definitely what it did. Um, dang, here, man. Uh, Justin, what's up? What's up? Remember a couple months I, I asked you if I can run a 25 gallon of salt water with two clams. It's running amazingly for six months. That's right, Justin. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that comment out loud. So. Justin said a couple of months ago, I recommended that he could have a couple of clowns in a 25 gallon salt water. And it's been running for the past six months. So, yeah, you definitely could do that. You definitely could get away with having a couple of clownfish in a 25 gallon. Now, long term, you will have to upgrade. I hope you know that, um, Justin. I know you're gonna know you're gonna upgrade, maybe upgrade them to like a 40 gallon, right? That's not that big, that's not that much of an upgrade, but you could upgrade them to a to a 40 gallon. Potentially keep all of your same, um, keep the same filter, keep almost everything the same. So I definitely would do that. Michael, what do you prefer, salt water or fresh, and why? Got to have both. Got to have both. I can't, you can't, in my opinion, you got to have both. Um, there are certain salt water fish I have to own, and then there are certain freshwater fish that I have to own. I could never just pick. It was hard enough to get into the salt water hobby. You know what I mean? I was one of those people that was on a fence for years. My company had a beautiful 150-gallon um, saltwater aquarium. I used to ask them a ton of questions. They didn't even have all the answers, but they all had a part to run that one, on that 150-gallon aquarium. So um, I did my own research and I learned how to do it. Now I feel like that's you know it's stuck. It's stuck to me. It's a lifestyle. I never will be able to not have a saltwater aquarium, even if it's just a small one. Um, eels, I love eels. I'm never going to not have an eel, you know, saltwater eels, freshwater. The doe is my favorite fish of all time. I got to own a doe got to own an arowana. You know what I mean? So, yeah, got to have, you got to have the best of both worlds. And that's really what it is, the best of both worlds. All right. Henry, yes, sir, I'm over here on a live vacuuming the cracks of the wood. Ah, Henry, shit, man. I wish I was there to help you, brother. 
I wish I was there to help you. Justin, I've done two water changes in six months. Water is crystal clear. When it evaporates, all I need to do is pour in some fresh water. That's right. That's right. Man, I'm happy for you, man. I'm so glad that you finally got into it. I'm so glad it's as easy as I say it is, man. I'm glad that you're here to attest to that, man. Thank you very much for letting everybody know that it's exactly the way I said it was. It's easy, y'all. And let me let me let me let me clarify. When I made that video about the new tank syndrome, that's the first time that's ever happened. It has never happened like that. So it's not a guarantee that you're gonna go through a new tank syndrome with a saltwater tank. No guarantee. Especially if you're not running corals. But I'll tell you right now, what I did backwards is I added in all of the corals. I didn't have any cleanup crew. I didn't have enough beneficial bacteria in there. I didn't have any copepods in there. Five days in, I added corals. What did I have to do after adding corals? I had to feed them. Instant nutrients, instant nutrients like this. And then the light source helps breed algae. So immediately, I got to the point to where I'm at right now. Now, I'm not stressed about that at all. Like I said, corals are doing amazing. That's nothing. So that's why I'm continuously putting out videos showing you how not to let that stress you out and learn how to deal with that without it becoming one of those things where, you know, it makes you want to get out the hobby. You know what I mean? It's not really a big deal. You know, it's easily manageable. Every time I look at that tank right now, it looks better today than it did yesterday. So every day, though, the cleanup crew is doing more and more to help me get to the point to where it doesn't look like that. And then once you get it under control, it's easy to manage it. But understand, that's what I did different. I got corals first before I added a cleanup crew. Before I added in copa pots, which really helps with that algae and things like that, that's how I got to that point. And so, yeah, I'm, hopefully I'm able to show y'all that it's not a stressful thing. Where are we at? Um, all right, Henry, can't be mad, though. Makes things worse, <laughs> for sure. Hey, Henry, you're right. You're right. You know, as I say all the time, man, you got to remain in control of those emotions and just get it done. I made a post earlier, when life throws you shit, what you do? You catch it and flush it, man. You know what I mean? You can't definitely can't be all mad about it. I remember when I did that, when I got the 240-gallon in the apartment, and the water just spilled all over the floor, the whole trash can. I was siphoning water into the trash can. The whole trash can fell over in the floor of the apartment. Floor of the apartment, y'all. And all I could do was just clean it up, you know? And I got a lot of compliments saying that I kept my cool bit. Like you just said, Henry, what else could I do? I'm going to be mad about it. You know, that's definitely going to make it worse. Probably stub your toe. Probably spill more water. You know what I mean? So, yeah, just keep your cool and just get it done. That's a great rule of thumb. All right, don't need to play. Um, Justin said, don't need to just, don't need to just need biofilter. Uh-huh. Michael Caesar, what I've learned about healthy tanks is they don't like to be disturbed. There you go, guys. I say that all the time. I think a lot of information on water changes is misleading and false. I'm enjoying this conversation. We even talked about the pond, man. You are on point, Mike. You on point. It's dope that salt water, that salt will never evaporate, but the fresh water in it, it does. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is dope, you know, but, you know, just top it off with the RODI. But, yeah, what, what Michael just said is what I'm always talking about. Sometimes you just got to leave the tanks alone. Just leave them alone. Weekly water changes is not necessary. It's not necessary. If it is, it's because it's probably overstocked. You probably overfeed. You know what I'm saying? And you're under filtering. You know what I'm saying? So if you over filter, under feed, and properly or understock your aquarium, you won't have to do weekly water changes. That's just a fact. You know, and then when you got fresh water, there's so many different ways to make it to where you don't have to do that. You can add some plants, which is going to, re which is going to remove the phosphates. It's going to remove the nitrates. And now you really don't have to do as many water changes. If your water evaporate, you add the fresh water. Sometimes that's enough. That is enough. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm learning. The longer I'm in this hobby, the more I'm experimenting, the, 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 the way that my tanks are set up between the overstock tanks to the minimal stock tanks to the understock tanks the understock tanks you don't even have to do water change on my on them at all like the 240 every six months the pond man once a year once a year 
But again, the pond has the big plants in there, the 240 water, 240, because the water was evaporation. I was evaporating. I was adding water. But if I had proper filtration, things like that. It all matters. It all matters. So, yeah, I agree. You know, when you look in these forums, you talk to people and they like water change every week, two water changes a week. Sometimes people do water changes on their discus aquariums every day, which is fucking mind blowing. I can't believe that people actually do that. But yeah, you know, I try to, I try my best to turn these into ecosystems. I want them to not only be an ecosystem, but really hands off. I don't even really want to be disturbing them unless I have to. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm so glad that you in this conversation right now, Mike. I'm really glad that you're contributing to this. You attest to what the hell I'm talking about. And thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. d has been doing salt for 14 years and never had new tank syndrome, but have always cycled my tanks properly. Yeah. And a little bit of luck, too. Not really on a little bit of luck. I feel like there's no improper way to cycle your aquarium. It's all subjective, you know? You think that your if you could think you could think that your way is the best way to do it. I could think my way is the best way of doing it. Somebody else they think the best way that their that their way is the best way of doing it. It's all subjective. As long as the tank gets cycled, that's all that matters. A cycle is a cycle. Fish cycle, not a fish cycle, doesn't matter. You know, it's just how do you deal with the problems when they occur? I'd rather deal with all of this shit so when it occurs, I can remain calm and deal with it. You know, people have Perfect aquariums, nothing ever happened, and then what happened when something happens? Oh my God, I don't know what to do because you ain't deal with shit. You know what I'm saying? I've dealt with so many different things to where if something pops up, I can handle it, and that's why I feel like when I'm talking, some people listen. You know what I'm saying? Because I've dealt with all of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want a perfect aquarium. Like, do you want a perfect life, or would you rather deal with some things in life? So, would you rather deal with some things in life? So, when the shit happens again, you know how to deal with it. All right, same shit. All right, where we at? Where we at? Cody, so if we had a um, a business license, can we buy fish for wholesale price? Or am I wrong on that? I bought reptiles for wholesale price, but I don't got a real business license. Just made up some numbers. I don't know how you did that. Um, so with the business license, you would want to buy a wholesale license. I don't know how that translates into you buying fish or anything like that or reptiles. But when you want to buy things wholesale, you need a wholesale license. And then that's how you end up buying things for wholesale. Now, if you want to resell it, you're going to need a retail license. You know what I'm saying? It's going to, li it's going to limit your options. You know what I'm saying? So um, it really just depends on what kind of business you want to go into. Yeah. Danny Aquatics, what's good, man? How you doing? How you doing? Michael Caesar. Pop, I'm on live right now. Carter, you got to go back in the living room with mom. All right, people always forget that tap water can be great for plants because of the trace elements like iron and tap water. Um, I think it's because of the tap water is a little acidic. I think um, the chlorine that they use in the tap water also is bad for the plant roots. You get what I'm saying? Like that can burn the plant roots, the, the plant roots. So you want to be careful. You know, I, I believe that the best water to use for your plants is from your fish tank. It already it already has the nutrients in there. It already has all of that. Just use that. But um, yeah, I, I don't really like I don't really like watering my plants with tap water because of the chlorine. You know, and all of the water has a chlorine in it because they got to kill off a lot of the things that's bad for us as people. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those things. I do a 50-50 tap and RO to start a planet tank. Yeah, I don't use RO. I don't use RO at all for uh, for my freshwater aquariums. It's a trip. I've go. You could go to a pet store and you'll see that they're using RO water for theirs, though. Some of them. Some of them do. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Xavier, Xavier, what's up? Got a 20 gallon salt going with two clowns and a bicolor blini. Want to add corals? What light and what coral to start? Do I need AI prime light? Um, yeah, so far as corals, I would start with like an A-can, Duncan. They're kind of small. You could get Zoas. Make sure you do your research on the Zoas. GSP, which is Green Star Pilot, that is almost bulletproof, almost bulletproof. 
Hey, y'all, when y'all come into the chat, if y'all haven't done so, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Um, what else? What's another good one? Candy Cane, Posting Zinnia, um, any kind of clove polyp. You got some options. As far as a light, no, you don't need a special light. Just core growing light. Thank you, number 28. Just some kind of like little light that you could use that, that will grow corals. I paid, the light that I bought was cheap, man. It was a um, a fly zone light. And um, it was very inexpensive. It was very inexpensive compared to some of those those expensive coral lights. If you want to get one of those, the problem I see with those is that even on a 20 gallon, you might need two. So, you know, a thousand bucks for a light, for two lights, I just I just can't see that. So let me show you how much I paid for my light for the 20 gallon. All right. So I, I paid $90 right there. And they even got a longer one. So I'm going to show you both of these. So you got the one. In fact, let's see. Which one did I get? Let me uh, make sure I'm on point with the size. Sixteen. Matter of fact, let me go to the to my orders that I bought. I just want to make sure that I bought that I show you the correct one. So there's multiple. And the thing about the light that I bought, you could attach another one straight to that. One. Okay, so the flies on one sixty five. I knew that already, obviously. All right, so the one that I got was 95 bucks. I'm glad I checked. So I bought this one right here for the 20 gallon. Right there, 95 bucks. And it works well, and it works well. Now on the 75 gallon, I would need probably, probably like two of these, two of these right here. So it'd be a cost of $200. So, you know, you don't necessarily need and this is the one that I bought. This is the one that I bought and I have on there right now. And it's not it's not enough. It worked very well for the 37 gallon. Comes with the remote. Let me make sure. There we go. Fiber Spectra. And this one is 160 bucks. And but you have a little uh 20, what's that, 20 dollars off coupon. So that's actually damn. Damn, y'all. My bad. There we go. All right. And as you can see, got the little $20 off coupon. So probably about like $130. It's pretty good. It's pretty decent. Um, but like I said, that will work on 37 gallon, 40 gallon, something like that. For the 20 gallon, you'll be cool with just the, the $95 light. All right, D Mass, a lot of misleading into the water changes, especially on salt. And misinfo on what fish you can add, you can and can't keep together. And the tank size on 75 and 55 salt, I change about every three months. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a lot of misleading information online. A lot of it, you know, you just got to get from your own experience. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like that's, 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 that's what you're going to have. That's what's going to have to happen anyway. You know, because even when you listen to somebody, it might not work that way in your aquarium. You know, that worked, for, that worked well for them. You know what I mean? So even if, uh, you know, when they're talking about compatibility between fish, it might just be those fish that work well together. You know, that's not a standard. So you're going to always have to fill it out for yourself. I don't know about changing every three months, but nonetheless, I'm glad how you're, how you're keeping your fish. I'm just really glad that it's working out. I'm glad that it's not problematic for you and, you know, you're not losing any sleep over it. All right, Cody, me and my dad would grow cichlids super fast from fry to maturity in just five weeks. Just 50% water changes each day for three to four weeks. Yeah, if that works, Cody, if that works. Um, sometimes just putting your fish into a bigger aquarium still work. But um, yeah, whatever works. Like I said, there's multiple ways of doing this. It's ways that I do it. It's ways that you do it. There's ways that I will not do it. Just like I know it's ways that you will not do it. Um, but what works best for us as each individual is really what, what we should be doing. Never do something because somebody else doing it and it don't work. Never do that. Okay, and I definitely had issues over the years. Man, lots of fish and corals lost, but we live and we learn. I'll never get out of the hobby. It's a lifestyle. That's right, D-Mass. Facts. Definitely a lifestyle. 
I use Prime in my tap. Man, you you want <laughs> Michael? You're you you're bold, man. You're bold. You're real bold. Evan TV, what's good with you? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, hi hi. My tanks not outside plants. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the outside plants. Evan TV, the Zen Ginger. How you doing, Henry? Good thing I've only got. It's only a one gallon tank. My 55 gallon, I probably lost a little over 10 gallons. Okay, okay, DMS. Now I don't need an AEI prime light. Any coral light off Amazon will work. I got my 25 gallon for $50 on Amazon. Man, I need to see which light you got. Which uh put that in the link. DMAS, put that in the link. Let us know which light you got. Man, we might uh somebody else might need that. I wish I could have got that one for 50 bucks. Yeah, put that in the comments. Evan, I don't think a 20-gallon tank is big enough for salt. That's bullshit, Evan. It is. It is. 20-gallon is big enough. It's the best starter size tank. It is. I don't know what you're talking about, Evan. You're wrong. You're wrong. No, Evan ain't trolling Cody. He, uh, you know, he he slides through. He slides through, man. He um, He's definitely not trolling. He just believe what he believe. But, Evan, man, that's not true. A 20-gallon is the best. Starter saltwater aquarium. I've been doing it for eight years. You know, you've been doing it for longer than me. Totally fine. But I've been doing it on a smaller level like that since I started. It's a great aquarium to start with. Just so you could get used to the hobby. Easy for the water changes. Easy for the water evaporation. It gives you some options with coral and fish. It's the best starter tank. Best starter tank. Everybody don't have the funds to be taking care of a 40 and 50 and all that. And I will never tell somebody that they got to wait until they could get a 40 or 50 to get started. 20 gallon, get started, do your research. You might upgrade because you want to upgrade, but if you choose not to, get the fish that's, per per that's perfect for that size aquarium. That's all you got to do. I went months with a 20 gallon. I mean, I had six to, all I have in here, I had more than six fish in there. I'm not going to lie. I had like 11 fish in there. I had three different types of um, I had three different types of uh, um, lionfish, dwarf fuzzy lionfish. I had two clownfish. That's four. I had two damsels. That's six. I had the um, the neon dotty back. That's seven. I had in there the hell up. I had um, two bangai cardinals. That's nine. What else I have in there? Uh, I had a Coral Beauty, that's 10. Yeah, in a 20 gallon. Um, yeah, I might have, and, and it's another one. That, oh, yeah, and I had a Scooter Blini, 11. And then I had, then I had Fire Shrimp. You know what I'm saying? Had hella corals in there. Look at the old videos. The old videos I used to put out. I was, was I doing YouTube at that time? I might not have been doing YouTube at that time. I could definitely pull up an old ass video and show it to you. Tank was. Immaculate, spectacular, crystal clear water, always good. Corals is looking amazing. Yeah, it works. It works. Uh, he said he's not experienced for that many years. Okay, Evan. Yeah, but you off you off the hook. But yeah, um, twenty gallon is an excellent starter aquarium for salt water. Fish RS, what started you in the fish hobby? And I saw you on your videos. I think you are a Marine. If so, thanks for your service. <laughs> thanks, you, I appreciate that, Fish, fish RS. Um, not a Marine. Um, as far as what started me in the hobby, my mom. My mom got me in the hobby. Uh, when I was a kid, my grandma had an aquarium. She had like a 40-gallon aquarium, kept guppies and and um, like albino quarry catfish and you know, her tank was always green. You know what I mean? Now that I think about it, her tank was always green. It was always hard to see in there. You know, I, I look at a little hole, and I used to remember looking at the aquarium like this and looking at all the little fish in there or whatever, whatnot. So that's what got me started. You know, my mom had an aquarium. You know, so obviously it translated from grandma to mom to me. So 10 years old, she bought me my first tank. Um, she bought me my first tank. We went to the pet store, bought some fish. I'm buying the same ones that she had, guppies, you know, platies, mollies. You know what I mean? My grandma taught me how to how to sex platies and mollies and guppies at an early age. So even still now, I remember from back then 
how you tell the sex between a male and a female, Molly, Platty, and Guppy. Uh, and then, I, you know, making mistakes, doing water changes, adding the water back in, straight cold water, no dechlorinator, things like that. You know, fish survived, some fish didn't. So I started going through things. I started going through ick. I started going through having to buy other fish. So then I started having like the painted glass fish. I started getting the garamis. I started getting all these different fish and getting my experience, you know? So that was third, uh, going on 31 years ago now. So after that, you know, growing up, I was 10. You know what I mean? Going through that, going through life, you know? My mom passed when I was 15, things like that. So, you know, um, you had to feel my way out. I had to figure my way out for the next, uh, what, 12 years, 12 years. So 12 years later, so now we're talking about 2010. By 2010, um, I got back in the hobby. You know, I got back in the hobby. And um, matter of fact, it was 2012, correction. So the next, for 14 years later, I got back in the hobby. I went to the fish store. They had this big-ass dovi. This dovi had to be about this big. I mean, I've never, I didn't even know what a dovi was. Never knew cichlids or fishing got that big. The damn thing had teeth probably about this big. Put my hand next to the tank. It's trying to bite my finger off, trying to bite my hand off, thrashing about, knocking around water, knocking around the heater and all that. I was like, I want that fish. So I started doing my research. Figured out that, you know, that fish is too big for me. I don't, you know, I can't even afford the tank at that time that it actually needed. Probably needed at least a 600 gallon at a minimum, you know. Um, so I put, I had put a deposit on that fish, 50 bucks. So I bought a, a 75 gallon. PetSmart or Petco, the whole little kit, tank, stand, all the stuff. Did some research, as I said, found out I couldn't keep it, bought the Albino Oscar. Bought the Albino Oscar, went back to the pet store and say, hey man, I can't, I can't, I can't take that fish. What could what else could I get? What could I put that $50 on? It's like, oh, so I got another Dovi for you, about six inches. It was inside of a thousand gallon aquarium. I'm like, I'll take that Dovi in. So I took, so I bought that Dovi. I take him home. Everything's working out good. And I go back to the pet store. I go buy a six-inch Buddy Cough Rye, which I always got to keep. I bought a six-inch um, Red Devil. Actually, it was a Midas. They always say that the Red Devils are Midas, but the lips let you know the difference. So it was a Midas. Um, and then I bought a Green Tear, all six-inch. Threw them all in a 75-gallon. A few weeks later, I bought a 120-gallon. Nonetheless, that's what started me out. That's why those are my favorite fish. The Dovi brought me back to the hobby, my, my true home. Well, made it a lifestyle again, and that's why at at this time I still will always keep a Dovi, the Midas Cichlid, and the Buddy Cough Rye. Like I always got to have those. Those are the ones that really just got me back into it. And so here I am, you know, shit. That was uh ten years ago. No, that was twelve years ago. So here I'm twelve years later. You know, I got a couple of fish rooms and still loving this hobby as much as I did when I was a kid. So it's a it's um it's just a blessing. And um, I'm glad that I'm able to reconnect with my family, well, reconnect with my parent, my grandparent, you know, through the hobby. All right, where we at? Where we at? Fish RS is way up here. Eddie Leo, what's good with you? If I had, hopefully, I hopefully you're still here. Do you ever plan on getting freshwater stingrays? I've been wanting to get some, but I don't know how fragile they are. Eddie Leo, if you are still here, Eddie. I'm not fooling around with the freshwater stingrays. They get too large, and um, you got to set up a situation that's going to basically have, be housed around them. So um, I'm, I'm straight. I got a saltwater stingray. She's max size, amazing. She's doing good in the 225. When I put her in the next tank, she's going to feel like she's in the ocean damn near. So, yeah, I'm not fooling around with the uh, with the freshwater stingrays. All right, where we at? Uh, Xavier agreed he need that fifty dollar light. Need two. Hopefully, um, hopefully we get the information on that. I was told that if you can manage a smaller tank, big tanks will be easy. That's correct, Xavier. Um, the bigger saltwater tanks are easier, but understand you're still going to do a cleaning, and then when you have to clean it, it's work. It's work. You're gonna everything's gonna be amplified as far as cost. More lights, more water, more filtration, more heat, more everything. It is easier because the, the fluctuation isn't so broad, isn't so so grand, right? If you have a if you have a twenty gallon or a thirty gallon, and something happens, you got to pull out eighty percent of the water. That's going to decrease it so much to where you know you might shock the fish when you got to, You know what I'm saying? 
it's too easy to have things go out of whack. That's why they recommend a bigger aquarium. But it's easier to get started with a 20-gallon, believe it or not, because at least you're going to gain the knowledge, the understanding on a small level, and you could decide to say, hey, I'm cool, or you could say, all right, I'm about to take this to the next level. So that's why I try to push the 20-gallon so y'all could get started. That's what I started with, and now I got a 225, and I'm going to build, you know, a 1300, you know, eventually. So it's just about getting started. Just get started in the hobby. All right, where we at? Where we at? Uh, Michael Caesar, absolutely. In a smaller tank, you don't have as much time to fight disease and blooms in the tank. So if you can manage that, big tanks are a breeze. Not quite a breeze. Not quite a breeze, though. Not quite a breeze. d mass Higer, 30 watts clip on. I'm going to check that out. All right, all right. He dropped information. Three modes with timers on sale right now for 40 bucks. I have it on my, my 25 brimless at GSP carpet mushroom and Zoa's in there. All right, Charles. So he uh he said it's the 30 watt, the higher 30 watt clip on. That's the watt, that's the light right now for your 25 gallons or 20 or 25 gallons and under saltwater aquariums. They have 40 bucks right now on sale. So if you need one, go ahead and uh, check one of those out. All right, Heiger is one of the most slip-on lights in the game. I have eight of Heiger lights going on five years. Man, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, though, Michael. Um, Heiger, they done let me down, man, with most of their products, man. Their, um, their circulation pumps get to the point to where they produce some current in the water. So you feel that electricity in the water. I'm disappointed with their circulation pumps. As far as their lights, some are good, some are not. Um, but yeah, fish tank, fish, fish fam link was good, was good. You mass, Michael, I have three hikers that are amazing. Uh the 20 gallon tank, my dad says, and he's experienced for over four <laughs> 20 years is way too small. Yeah, Evan, sorry, man. Oh, he, oh, you said it for 20 years. Yeah, Evan, he don't uh sorry, man. He just don't, he just don't know what he's talking about. It's not way too small. I'm mean, talking to somebody that's been doing that for for this whole time, so it's not way too small. It's not at all. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that, but facts are facts. But if that's what you want to believe, it's on you. It's on you, man. Uh, where we at? So much affordable than anything is, Cody. We have had a higher heater for our pond. For a year, and I love it. I think they're just as good, if not better, than marine land heaters. Yeah, I've actually had problems with their heaters, too. I've had problems with their heaters, too. You know? But, yeah. All right, D-Mass, we'll listen to your dad. Then, bro, shaking my head, just get a tank and get started. That's what I'm trying to tell him, D-Mass. That's what I'm trying to tell Evan. Yeah, he might have left the chat because he, like, he didn't like what I said. But, you know? Probably should have kept that part to yourself, or be uh be willing to accept some uh an opposite of opinion. You know, you definitely can't just think that that's correct. If you see that I'm doing it, you see other people doing it. You know, don't put the blinders on. Don't put the blinders on, man. Don't do that. All right. Well, uh, D Mass is a whole lot more kinder than I am. Um, if you're getting to start with solar tank, you know, you're going to spend a lot on it. No, Evan, that's again, that you're not, you're not accurate again. You might've left, but you know, he said, if you're getting, in, if you're getting to start with a smaller tank, you know, you're going to spend a lot. That's not true at all. It's not true. Again, that's something else that's false, man. You know, do you even watch the videos that I put out? You're making me want to, you're making me start to feel like you are trolling, man. What's going on? You know, damn well, that's not true. That's why I keep pushing for the 20-gallon. You can start up a 20-gallon tank for $500. When I started, because I listened to other people and I bought everything, I started mine up for $1,500. So I make this real easy for anybody to get started in the saltwater hobby. You know what I mean? You tripping, dude. You tripping. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Hey, Eddie, uh, freshwater stingrays need a minimum of six feet long tank. And three and a half feet front to back. Michael, I think they need bigger than that, man. You know, these freshwater stingrays get about three foot. They get about three foot, man. 
Got an hour and a half work left. Just want to say thank you, Cleveland, for taking me into getting back into the fish hobby. We're talking you back into getting into the fish hobby. It was, I was very skeptical at first. Man, Colin, I'm glad that you got back into the hobby, man. I'm glad that you got back into the hobby. You know, and uh, I appreciate you for commenting and letting me know that and all that, man. Um, that's what this is about. You know, I'm trying to get as many people into the hobby as possible. I don't want anybody to be afraid of the hobby, whether it be freshwater, saltwater. That's what this is about. I love enjoying and learning from y'all, and I hope that y'all enjoy and learning from me and things like that. Like, you know, it's a fish community, man. It's a fish community. Give and take, learning from one another. So I'm glad that I'm able to provide some useful information to some of y'all and vice versa. Y'all definitely provide me with some useful information that I could use and that I use as well. So that's what this is about. The fish community. All right. Eddie, look, I got a crazy um, opportunity to get a free 800 gallon tank, and I'm debating on getting an arowana and a stingray or just make it into an African cichlid tank. Damn. Man, that is a field comment, man. Um, first of all, congrats on that, on that 800 gallon free tank. I'm so jealous. Oh, I'm so jealous. You know, you don't need that. Just slide that my way, man. I'll send you the address. You could, you know, I'll drive. I'll take the tractor trailer truck and I'll come get that. Kidding, 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 kidding. But, man, congrats on that, man. That's sick. It'll be sick either of those ways. As far as the arowana, it'll work in 800 gallon. But also remember, the arowana gets three foot. It's three foot. Stingray, that'd be a sick ass African cichlid tank, though. That'd be a sick ass African sickle tank. I don't have experience with other higher products, just the lights. Okay, Michael. Yeah, yeah. They used to give me free products, man. They used to, man, they were sponsoring the videos when we first moved to the house. What happened was that they started producing products that I had to be honest about. I didn't put the content out to y'all so y'all can know. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't vouch for them no more. You know, and I told them how disappointed I was with their products. They didn't want to correct it. You know, and so that's why, you know, I don't, I can't sit up there and say, oh, you know, they're great and things like that. You know, I've, I've gotten so many free products from their ass. And the fact that, the fact that they failed is very, uh, is very disappointing. It's very disappointing. Uh, Darth Raider, just buy a rubber made from Tractor Supply. For real though, I don't know what. That is pertaining to, I want to, we finna say, screw the tanks and buy plastic totes for guppies and platy breeding. Okay, okay, Cody, that's what's up. That's good. Our player started with the 135. Okay, okay. Yeah, Cody, you did say he was trolling. You did. I didn't think he was trolling, but he left. He didn't like, he didn't like what, what, what I said about that. But, you know, whatever. I would have told him the same shit. Um, they sell saltwater ready aquariums that are smaller than 20 gallons and it's low budget starting point. Thank you, Marlon. Thank you, Marlon. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, 10 gallon would be hard, but if you want to keep like invertebrates, you know, you can. Hell, the mantis shrimp would do good in a 10 gallon from what I read online. I wouldn't do that, but it would be okay. You know, that's a saltwater, you know, that's a saltwater uh, fish or shrimp. So, yeah, you got options. Dark rating, salt water intimidates me, not going to lie. Man, let me know when you want to get started. Let me know when you want to get started. Shoot me an email. I'll drop down um, a list of things that you could pop, that you could get to get started, or you could watch one of my older videos. That's why I keep on putting as one of the um, end screens. You know, you could look into one of those videos, how to get started with a salt water aquarium. It's no trick. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you want to, if you want to start off with just fish. You would not go through what I'm going through with the with the hair algae if you started off with just fish. It's not going to be an excess of nutrients in that water column. You know what I mean? So it's so easy, man. Like y'all could get started with a sponge filter if you just want to get started. All you got to do is buy the live rock, buy the live sand, have a sponge filter, have a heater. You know what I mean? Buy your salt water, get started. Buy five gallons of RODI. It's so easy. So easy. Michael Caesar, only five to six species of freshwater stingway get over three feet. Most species of Matara will max at 26 inches for females and males are 24 
Thermantoro species that get over. Okay, okay. Well, you just educated me. Yeah, they still, I'm still, I'm still cool off them though. But yeah, you just, you just educated me. But even 24 inches, that's still too big. Still too big. Are we talking about the disc? Or are we talking about the whole thing with the tail included? But still, that's still too big for me. I'm cool. I, I, I've lived vicariously through Joey and, and off the deep end aquatics and Ohio Fish Rescue and seeing stingray biology with theirs and King of DIY. I've seen all of these guys with their stingrays and nothing makes me want to grab one of those big ass stingrays. Not a single thing. Not a single thing. Now, if they were only 12 inch discs, I mean, 12 inches with the disc included, like how my Cortez Stingray is, which is not that nice looking compared to a black diamond, then I then we could talk. But 24 inches, I'm straight. I'm straight. Xavier, I got my 20 gallon saw set up for about $100. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about, man. Xavier Hairstone, Hairston said, I got my 20 gallon salt set up. For about a hundred dollars, Petco tank, twenty gallon hang on the back filter, twenty gallon sponge, one good rock water. That's what I'm talking about. It's so it's cheap. It's cheap. Easy to get started. Thank you very much for that, Xavier. I appreciate you for uh, for saying that. And I didn't tell him to say this. He's just being honest. Man, come on now. That's what I'm trying to push. So five hundred dollars. When I tell y'all that is a lot, but that's you know what I'm saying. You know, you could gauge whether or not you want something more or something less. That's up to y'all. But it's definitely a good starting point. Definitely a good starting point. Being that you have many tanks, do you have family members that come over to look at the tanks all the time or other family members into the hobby? Good question, D-Mass. No. Um, we do have family members and friends that, that do come over. But for the most part, you know, um, a lot of the family, they don't really care. They don't really care about this. Um, I just had the neighbors, <laughs> the neighbors came over and did a little tour. So that was pretty cool. You know, they wanted to see fish rooms and all that. Um, friends, they do come over and want to see and things like that. It's more like other people. You know what I mean? As far as my family, they're not into this, to this hobby at all. You know, I don't, I don't have a single family member, especially that's grown, that's into aquariums, which kind of is a bummer. But at the same time, you know. My family and my immediate family in this house, obviously they care, but outside of the house, they don't really care like that. They don't really care like that. All right. Uh, Michael Caesar, in the Amazon, they keep discovering new Mataro species that are up to 24. Now it's crazy, and they hybridize in the wild. Man. You know, speaking of hybridizing, what's the name has been doing an amazing job of creating these real, real bizarre and interesting looking uh, stingrays. Um, care from Stingray Biology. It's crazy. He got some nice ones now. <laughs> Michael said he's either not years old or a troll. Yeah, he's out of here though. He been left. Cody Miller just looking out, bro. I appreciate that. Freddie, I have a 75 gallon tank. I want to have South American cichlids in it. Okay. What are you thought? And is it big enough? Um, I don't keep South American cichlids, but I would probably say it's it might be a little small. You know, thinking about the South Americans like the Earth Eaters and and Redhead um geophagus and things like that. They get pretty big. They get pretty big. So long term, I think that 75 gallon is going to be a bit tight. It's going to be a bit tight. I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than a 125. And I don't even think a 125 will be good for a bunch, like 10 or more. You know, long term. I'm talking about long term. So I probably would go with, you know, if it's going to be a grow tank, cool. Cool. But long term, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. I don't keep South American cichlids. Let me know. Would a 75 gallon be too small? I'm thinking that long term is too small. I'm thinking like a 125 is much better. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if I'm wrong. Because I'm thinking like the geophagus. You know what I'm saying? So let me know if I'm wrong. All right, Xavier speaking facts. Sure, you don't even need a rock. <laughs> yep, you don't need a rock. The reason why I buy the live rock for the salt water is for the beneficial bacteria. Yep, 
Eddie Lee, I'm planning to put it on my patty all, my patty all side. I'm going to take all precautions to keep the temp stable by getting a chiller and heater out of South Texas so it doesn't get cold. But I think the the sticklers will be less fragile to changing water or changing weather. Okay. Yeah, I wish I could put some exotics outside. I really do. Unfortunately, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't. Michael Caesar, slowly but surely, I will sell a flower horn to the fish corner. <laughs> you know, um, I'm I'm just not. You know, I have I have Drax. I got Drax, but you know, I'm not I'm not really a, 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 a flower horn kind of sword. You know what I mean? Like I like them. I've had my share of the. I think they're like red monkeys. I had super reds. Um, I've had the Thai silk, you know. Um, I guess I don't really like the single fish only aquariums, you know. I don't like to have a bunch of those. I got Drax down there in the seventy-five gallon by himself. You know, he really don't do well with other fish. So yeah, Xavier, you're gonna have to upgrade that seventy-five. I have an Oscar two seven to eight inch Jaguars and Jack Dempsey and they will get more room soon. Yeah. But isn't isn't the um the Jaguars and Jack Dempsey, if I'm not mistaken, those are Central American. I think the Oscar is South American. And uh but yeah I think I think the um the Jags and the Jack Dempsey is central. You said it's your obsession. I'm the only person in the world with a line of flower horns so I'm going to keep pushing. I need to see that flower horn, man. What that look like? What that look like? I need to see that. Cody was stopping you from doing some outdoor mini ponds, at least in the summer. What's your average in the summer and winter? Um, it gets freezing temperature in the winter. It gets freezing, and in the summer, over a hundred, over a hundred, hundred and nine, hundred and nine. Also, I don't want it to look hella crazy outside. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to look hella crazy outside. Um, yeah, that's 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 what's stopping me. Once I get my yard together, I haven't had time to really do what I want to do. But once I get the yard together, then maybe I could do some things outside. I want to do some things outside, like the shady area. Um, but it gotta be. It can't be exotics. That's Cody. When I'm thinking about doing like. When I'm thinking about doing some uh, some native fish, then I might think about doing some native fish. I know I can't do the exotics. Michael, where do I live? I'm in Sacramento, Cali. I'm in Sacramento. You know, it gets hot. It gets, you know, hot days, cold nights. Hot days, cold nights. Yeah, but yeah, I think I'm gonna do the. I think I'm gonna do like the native. I mean, maybe not, maybe not the bass because bass get get huge and need a lot of space. But maybe like, maybe like the bluegill, sunfish, something like that. Maybe, maybe if not, you know, probably could breed some guppies outside or something like this. Something like that I could probably get away with. You know what I mean? Um, but I definitely can't have the exotics outside. It's just not going to be. I can't even put my turtle outside. I've been wanting to put my, my turtle inside the pond for the longest. Just get way too cold. Very am also considering a booner for the 75 gallon. I think that they are a very nice fish. Definitely something to think about. Brady, just make sure that you're aware of how aggressive and booner get. And booner are some aggressive African cichlids. No lie. You know, I just seen a post today. It was funny because they bought the bumblebee and I think it was the Jahani. And um, they were surprised that the Jahani was was um, beating up all the other fish. And they got them inside of a, I think it was a 20 gallon. Small tank, aggressive fish. You know, Mbunas are aggressive. They are aggressive. You're going to probably need a tank for timeout. 
The Peacocks, my, well, shit, damn, those are aggressive too. Damn. Yeah, African sickles are aggressive fish. They're aggressive fish. Michael Caesar, true, I got to get him to see it. The fry are just now putting colors on. Yeah, I got to see. I need to see it. Do you live in an HOA? And if so, does that limit what you're able to do? No, I don't live in an HOA. I'm able to do whatever the hell I wanted to do. I built a shed in the backyard because we didn't have a shed. That's how I was able to convert that, that sunroom into a fish room. Built a pond in front of the HOA over here. I do whatever I want, which is amazing. Yep. Yeah, Cody, I, you know, um, I, remember I, I remember I did catch a bass one time. I caught a bass and brought it home to my aquarium. And that thing had some parasites. It had worms all in its mouth. I had to go and get some really strong um, parasitic, parasite, you know, medicine, medication. And I, and, I, and I was able to, you know, I was able to remedy that situation. But in the end, I ended up taking that thing back to the pond. It was on somebody's property. So I didn't, and like I, it ain't like I took it to, you know, a public pond or anything like that. It was private. And, um. Yeah, you know, catching your own fish and putting them into the aquarium or your pond, whatever it is, an experience. That's something that, you know, you, that can be shared with kids. So that's that's good. But I don't I don't know. I got to see what kind of space I'm going to have. When I upgrade Miami <clears throat> to that 300 gallon, that 100 gallon pond, I'm putting that in the backyard. So I'm going to have at least 125 gallon little pond in the backyard, a little situation. But I can't do too much because, you know, I got the raccoon problem. Remember, Cody, I got that raccoon problem. I ain't killed it yet. It's still there. It's still coming. It's still coming into the yard. So once I catch it and just, then I could probably do some more things. Magic Mike was good. Best idea is for a 25 gallon lagoon salt water. I don't know. I've actually never had a lagoon salt water. Um, I don't know, Magic Mike. I don't know. Cody uh, would have eaten that fish. <laughs> Michael, so what? So that's awesome. That's not a worry for you. Yep, for sure. Don't need the HOA getting in my business all the time. D Mass, I just took the new piece of driftwood out. Do you think a UV sterilizer will clear the water up even quicker? No. So what a UV sterilizer does, it'll kill the algae that's in the water column. You know what I mean? So that's not algae from the tannins. That that's 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 the tannins from the driftwood. So it's totally different. So it's not going to help with that. You'll just have to do water changes, you know, do water changes once a week. If you really want to try to push it, you know, you could probably do a couple times a week. I mean, the African cyclic tank, I was able to pull out 80% of the water because it was overstocked. So I had a ton of beneficial bacteria. You could try that. Worst case scenario, if you pull out 80% of the water is that you crashed the aquarium, which means that you took out too much beneficial bacteria and that you're going to have to wait for the cycling process all over again. But it'll probably be cleared up. You know, at least clear it up enough to where it's not looking all crazy. So you got some options. Just got to figure out which option works best for you. Okay. Uh, would have looked like a rot skipping. <laughs> I just let it sit. UV won't kill tannins. Michael, confirm. How are you trying to get it? Appreciate you. Yeah, man. We didn't even talk about the pond. Like, that's crazy. What was this topic supposed to be? <laughs> what was the topic for today was supposed to be? I don't even remember. Damn. We ain't even we ain't even touched on the topic, y'all. I ain't even touched on the topic. What the hell was the topic for today? Anybody remember? What species of fish do I have? Or you mean, can you have in a 75 gallon, if any? There's a bunch of different fish you can put in a 75 gallon. Um, right, what's the topic again? <laughs> but um, there's a bunch of different fish you could put in a 75 gallon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, there we go. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Man, so I'm going to touch on, I'm gonna touch on the, uh, the 75 gallon, and then I do want to get into the topics because there's some things that I was thinking about doing. So as far as 75 gallon, you could put shell dwellers. You could put a bunch of different smaller, you know, um, cichlids in there. You could put some blue car. You could put some blue rams. You could put some fire mouth cichlids in there. You could do convict cichlids. Uh, you can do the African cichlids if you want. But the 
the parameters might be different with some of the other ones. Um, yeah, you got options. You can make it a planet tank where you have a bunch of different um, shoaling fish. You could have um, Daniels, uh, uh, pearl scale um, Daniels. You could do chili, um, I think it's like chili rasp boars. You could do, um, it's a lot of different fish. There's a lot of different options you have for the 75 gallon. You just might have to drift away from the cichlids or decide on some cichlids that's probably not going to cause you any any headache. Um, went from algae in your pond to the 20 gallon being the best saltwater tank. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Michael. Um, so yeah, so it, well, we were the topic was never even about the um, the algae in the pond. The topic was do y'all think do y'all think a kiddie pool makes a good pond? I know Cody has one for his. I know Cody has a as a catfish in his in his kiddie pool, and it's been working out well for him. Do y'all think that a pond kiddie pool will make a good pond? Got brown algae in the bottom of the pond in the in one corner where it gets the most light, but other than that, lights on twelve hours a day and have clear water. Okay, I agree. I, I believe that I believe that they're amazing. Um, I have heard people have issues with them getting holes and things like that, and that's kind of like what I wanted to touch on. But yeah, rectangular the rectangular index is fire for sure. <coughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. I was gonna do so. Speaking of like you know finances and things like that, I was actually going to. Uh, Instead of doing a plywood build on the big guys immediate, well, it's not going to be immediate, right? It's not going to be immediate. Let's be real about it. It'll take some time to get the funds to buy all those glasses. Those glass panels that you need for something of 3,000 gallons are expensive. It's like $800, $1,200 a panel, right? Depending on the size. That's a lot. So, you know, it's going to be on hold, y'all. It's going to be on hold. So what I was thinking of, it's just upgrading them into, you know, something like a, 2200 gallon kitty pool pond you know think about upgrading them to a 2200 gallon you know i know eventually you know when things change up you know i could go ahead and and drop the bag on that but right now can't drop the bag on that y'all but i do want to upgrade them so i'm just being real with all 17 or 19 of y'all y'all catching the y'all y'all catching the skinny right now you know what i'm saying so i'm thinking that's what i'm gonna end up doing so I can provide them with a bigger home and so I can make sure my pockets stay, you know, stay right. You know what I mean? Um, then I got a pool. I could, I got a, then I have a pool that I could do something else with. I don't know what I'm going to do with that 800 gallon pool. Maybe put it outside, you know, maybe get some, uh, I don't know. I know Cody got some ideas for me. If I put the 800 gallon outside, I know he got some ideas for me, but that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. What y'all, what y'all think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's up, Kazi? What's up, what's up Kazi? Um, any advice for a 22 year old flower horn breeder who wants to work for himself? Keep at it. Keep at it, Michael. I think that's the. I think that's the best. That's the best advice. Cody said, "Get a collab going." Definitely not talking about myself. Oh. <laughs> who's a who's a 22 year old? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I that's what I would just advise. You know, it's it's work. You know, figure out figure out your clientele base. You know what I'm saying? Figure out a way, as many ways to get that information out to as many people as possible. Like Cody said, get some collabs. Um, you need marketing. You know what I mean? You need marketing. You need people to know what you do. You know what I mean? I would start a page up on you on Facebook just for that. I would start a YouTube channel. I would make a, uh, I would come up with a name. I would monetize that name, you know, and then I would put that on all platforms. You know what I mean? I would push the narrative that you are a flower horn breeder and you know, the, you know, I would highlight the uniqueness of the flower horn that you created and just be consistent. Just be consistent. It takes time. You know what I mean? That's the best advice I could uh, I could give. Collins get a 15 minute break 
Let's go. Okay, you got a 15 minute break. Yeah, Colin, you did so you might have just missed it. So I was saying, anybody else comment? Hold on, I got some conch nails for my tank. And they're cleaning up the diet times and the sand like a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about breed guppies, platies, mollies, easy cheap fish. You can sell to local fish stores. Michael, yes, sir. I have YouTube. I can't change my name for another week. Okay, okay. All right, that's the start, Michael. That's the start. But yeah, Colin, so I was saying that what you think. I was thinking about upgrading. Probably gonna do I'm gonna do what I want to do anyway. But I still want to get y'all an opinion and y'all feedback. So the topic was, do y'all think kitty pools make a good pie? And then um, what do y'all think about just going ahead and getting a kitty pool pie and upgrading my big guys from 800 gallons to, you know, a 2,200 gallon a lot faster than I would be able to upgrade them to that 3,000 gallon. And really, it's only 900 gallons off. And that is a big difference, right? But, you know, they're not going to mind. They just want to be upgraded. They just want that bigger space. They in 800s right. They in an 800 gallon. That's almost like three times the size of what they're in right now. That's the one go bring light to my craft. I feel like I have a lot of knowledge and experience that I can share. I've always, always wanted to do this. Do it then, Michael. Yeah, consistency is everything. And you say, Colin, definitely would do that. I'm on it. Yeah. You know, man, it's it's. This hobby gets expensive. Y'all know that already. So yeah, I definitely got to do what's what's best for for for, the, for my whole for my whole family. I got to think about all of us. You know what I mean? So that is definitely what I'm leaning towards doing. Like I said, y'all getting the skinny right now, man. I just found you like four days ago. You are a cool ass dude for real. Love the realness towards everything. Thank you, Michael. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that I was able to. To give you that impact already, you know, I try my best to be as real as possible. You know, I don't know who else do it like this. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to give it to you straight up, you know, and I enjoy this. Like, this is this is fun. This is fun right now, man. I'm, I'm chilling. You know, I, I'm chilling, you know. So, yeah, I appreciate all of y'all, all of y'all that's contributed to the comments, helping this, helping this content, you know, get made. I appreciate it, man. I say it all the time, but I don't mean that lightly. You know what I mean? I really appreciate it. I never would have thought that uh, that I would be able to vibe with people on YouTube that I never even met or even talked to before. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so it's all good. I really appreciate all of y'all. Respect y'all. And thank y'all for all the contribution that y'all do for this channel. Period. Kazi Kazi, what's up? As long as you know you can do it safe, man, go crazy. You already know I'm going to go crazy. Man, I, man, yeah, yeah. The best part is, the best part about that, it goes from being a, building that third, that, uh, turning that into what I initially, it should be an end goal anyway. So turning that into a 3,000 gallon, 3,500 gallon, it's going to be amazing. And it don't, if I put the pool in there, it doesn't mean that I can't do that in the future. It just means that I could do it in the future, right? So it goes from possibly costing, let's just say, watch these numbers. It goes from possibly costing about five to six grand to be in a kiddie pool that costs about 600. You know what I mean? 10%, 10% of what it could cost. So that alone makes it better for, you know, better for all of us. You know what I mean? And they gonna have 13 feet of swim space. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. Colin, I think you should because it, it would inspire others for another alternative. Yep. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate that. Xavier, I just watched a video where it looks like these dudes have a kiddie pool for salt water with the side cut out to see. Well, to look up the name may give you an idea for the upgrade. Okay, Xavier. Um, damn, they cut out the side? I know they got some pools that have like a, a clear side. I don't really like that. Um, and those are usually like a thousand gallons. I've seen those before. The world needs more straight up. Always need more real people, more realness. Yep, I agree. Cody, you need to get these three line saddlebacks. You've seen those. Um, three lines sticklebacks. No, I haven't. Sticklebacks. Let me look those up. Got me curious. I don't know what those are. Hold on. Three line. Damn. 
three line. I hope you uh, stickle back. Native to my area. Okay, all right. I'm about to look him up. All right. How you know about these, man? These are some ugly little fish, man. What, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with these? Give me some ugly little fish. Damn. <laughs> Cody, what am I supposed to do with those? Some ugly little fish. <laughs> um, ugly fish might get some views. <laughs> right, right. They probably would. Yeah, man. Those are some ugly little fish. I do want to. I do want to get the sun fish in the blue kill though. I do want to get those. DG's, how my match is doing? It's doing amazing. It's doing amazing. We just did a live feeding last night. Not a live feed, but the video was live, and we fed him. Uh, he's doing amazing. Richard, what's good, bro? What pool pond are you going to snatch up? Richard, so I was thinking about snatching up. Let me show you. Let me show you. It's going to be 2,200 gallons. Let me show you. So the one that I want... I'll show you right now. All right. So I'm thinking I'm thinking 13 feet by seven feet. All right, there we go. And they're not expensive. Let me show you. Here we go. Come on. I'm gonna be mad if they give me too many options already. That's not even. Damn. Hold on. There we go. All right, here we go right here, y'all. So at Home Depot, they got this joint right here. It's a rectangle one. I would have liked to go with a circle one, obviously. Not really like circle, but kind of like racetrack. I would have liked to have gone with that one. But the price for this one right here, look at that, 639, 39 inches deep. That's, that's, that's cool. That ain't, you know, that's cool. 39 inches deep, 13 foot by 7 feet. That's cool. That is cool. I think I'm going to do that. I think that's what I'm going to do. And definitely big savings. Michael said, <laughs> Colin, I hate when I see a huge pond with no structure. I agree. I hate when I see ponds and it's just empty, man. Like, I feel like Try to create that ecosystem as best as you can. You know, there's a way to make it to where you don't you don't put holes in your pond or your your pool by putting rocks in there. You put a nice thick mat, you know, um, the kind of mat that you that you could lift weights on. You know, you put that thick mat down there. You cover it up with some sand, some rock. Put your put your boulders on there. You're not gonna puncture it. Don't put a fish in there with with spines. You're good to go. Yep. Cody, you want me to look up another one? You can say look up the Sculptins. What's that? Bass are definitely amazing. Oh, yeah, the fish guys. Yeah, I watched them. Xavier, <laughs> well, I used to watch them. Um, yeah, 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 I used to watch them. I think, I don't know what they have now. I don't know what they have now. I haven't watched them in some time. But, yeah, I remember those guys. I used to watch them. Yep. June, I went to pick up the Hellstream loaches to go with the blue car, and they are in current and they were in quarantine. Yeah, June, I actually about to, I'm actually about to pick up some of those Hellstreams as well. Um, next time I go to my local fish store, I'm about to grab me some of those. I need some for almost all of my tanks. Yep. Blue eye marble sculpting. I'm gonna look that up. Another native, I'm gonna check it out. How many African sticklers you think would fit in an 800 gallon? I'm gonna need a lot of power heads and crushed coral. No, you just buy the buy the right um the white the, the right substrate for your free African cichlids. And as far as how many, oh my goodness, man, how many do you want? How many do you want? A hundred, two hundred? How many do you want? Maybe not two hundred. I'm exaggerating, but I probably would put like a hundred in there. I probably would put like a hundred, if not more. I'm not gonna lie. 
you know, full grown, you probably going to only have like a hundred, a hundred's like, you know, might be a lot, but all of them would not be the same size. So yeah, I will go with like a, man, please. That's, that's, man. That's, that's an eye catcher. Well, that would be an eye catcher. 800 gallon African cichlid tank. That'd be so, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. That would look, honestly, that would look better than having an arowana and a singray in it. It'd be that, it'd be so much more impressive. You know what I mean? I'm going to give you an example. That one guy that has that at a 17, I think it's like a 17,000 gallon uh, reef. Uh, I don't remember his name. Somebody named his name last not last time. But that reef guy that has like a few million dollar system, you know, and it's so impactful, not because he have these big saltwater fish in there, it's because he has so many small ones in there. And then he has, you know, the corals and all of that. And you're just able to watch a little piece of the ocean in his aquarium. So, yeah, you know, you got an 800 gallon and you set it with all African cichlid, all African cichlid fish. You could literally mimic their env natural environment to the T almost. You know what I mean? You could stack up some rock against the back wall or you could have something built. You could either build it out of um, the foam and then hit it with the with the with the uh, cement. You know what I mean? You could do all different things. And, you know, like I said, it's a showpiece. It's a showpiece. So, yeah, whatever you decide to do, man, I definitely want to be a part of it. I, I share it on the channel. You know what I'm saying? I want to see that. Xavier said they got a 3,000 gallon. Okay. I'm behind. Would I be swimming with my fish? Hell no. Nah. No. Nah. I was going to have to swim with the fish if I would have put him in that corner tank, that six-foot tank. You know, I'm not going to have to get into the uh, 2200. 39 inches tall? I could, You know, I'm tall. I'm six foot. I could reach out. I could stretch. Definitely not going to have to get in there. But, yeah, they got a 3,000-gallon salt water, man. That's, yeah, man, I wish I had a 3,000-gallon salt water. Nick Bingo fell off. Oh, what? Damn, Nick. The money be too good for these guys. <laughs> you know, Nick Bingo was one of the ones. I was so happy to see him transition from struggling with his saltwater aquariums and fish to what he was at when I stopped watching. I mean, I was, I was, I was actually proud. You know what I mean? I don't know the kid, obviously, but I was proud. You know what I mean? Because I seen how we started out, you know, fish getting sick and dying and things like that to when he got that, that 5,500, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, I think he sold that joint. Nope. He don't have the 5,500, the 5,500. Like that was amazing. So, um, yeah. So he's saying, oh no, can't believe he fell off. Can't fall off that damn near a million subs though. Like right, Eddie, you would need a minimum of 400 Africans. And I'm not joking. Michael says <laughs> 400 African singles for the 800 gallon. <laughs> I thought 200 was going to be too much. And definitely, June, they do look like little rays. The poor man's rays, right? I'm going to get some of them. Michael, I know a guy who had a tank like that. He said, if you don't crowd absolutely the hell out of them, they just slowly kill each other off. Oh, shit. Um, Damn. Damn. Well, I do understand the idea of overstocking your cichlid aquariums. I do I do understand that. But I don't know how healthy your fish would be if you had 400 inside of a 800 gallon. Maybe I'm just not able to picture it. Maybe I'm just not able to picture it. Because I thought, I thought 100 was a lot, right? But I did have probably like 30 in my 55 gallon. So 30, that would be 60 and 110 times four, 240. Yeah, yeah. So more like more like 200 to 300 in your um in your 800 gallon. I think that would be I think that would be a crowded aquarium. I think that would, I think that would actually that would probably do. Yeah. 
All right, where we at? Cody, to be honest, the reason we haven't put any sand in our pond is because it's already so much weight already with just water, so kind of scared it's going to fall into the basement. Oh, shit. You got chores on the second floor? Or on the first floor and you got a, a space under? Yeah, I wouldn't trust that either. Yeah, I understand, Cody. You ballsy. Why don't? Why can't you put it in the basement? Damn. Oh, shit. Yeah. Confidence be a mug, right? Confidence be a mug, right? Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Marlon, you make me want to get an African cyclic tank again. 800 gallon cyclic tank is fire and will be fire. Yeah, I agree, Marlon. It'll be stupid fire. Yeah. Yep. Paps, peacocks. To me, those are like some of the best ones, man. Like, I wasn't a fan of peacocks, but to see how these peacocks act at feeding time, like, it's it's crazy. I used to like them bonus. I was in, I used to have some in bonus with some of my Central American cichlids. Of course, they got killed, you know negligence didn't really understand you know size and all of that but now i know and yeah the african cichlids the peacocks even with the with the frontosa it's, a, it's the way to go it's the way to go all right man i would do a, something like that i have two 135 tanks filled with upfill with african cichlids and a six foot 65 gallon with with Motis would love to um, own some big red tails. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I definitely and I definitely agree with that though. If you had, if you were able to put all of those from the two one thirty fives into an eight hundred gallon, that'd be crazy. Yeah, Cody. Wish I could get my friend in South America, in South Africa to go to the lakes, get us some large Cynodonus catfish. That's funny, man. You could get Cynodonus catfish here though. But yeah, they're not that large. They're not that large. Cody, we swim with the fishes. <laughs> you swim with your fish, Cody? <laughs> you messing with me, right? <laughs> you messing with me. I know you messing with me. Man, do, do evil jewel cichlids have to live in solitude? Evil jewel cichlids. What are the evil jewel cichlids? What are the evil jewel cichlids? I don't know what the evil jewel cichlids is. But they shouldn't have to live in solitude. There's not that many cichlids that got to live in solitude. Even I've seen people even keep flower horns with other fish. Let me see. My dream tank is a 12, 10 to 12 foot African cichlid tank. Man, I understand why. I'm not, I do understand why. Which ones? Are we talking about haps? We talking about peacocks? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we talking about for the 10 to 12 foot? Colin looks like he said in the video is that he got a house with no credit. Eh. Shit. Did he pay, man? He was making so much money, he probably paid for that house outright. And he got a normal money loan. Oh, and it screwed him over. Oh, damn. Damn. I'm really surprised, though. He was making a lot of money off of YouTube, but he was also spending a lot. He was also spending a lot. Damn. Yeah. You don't know until you know. Sometimes that experience with certain things is what. What will prevent? I can't even. I can't even imagine that though. I, you know, man, I can't imagine that. You know, his parents. I know his parents for sure will be looking out, trying to help mold and advise. Ain't no telling. And it's an old, old oak house though, so the beams are thick. Okay, that's what's up, Cody. What about a three hundred gallon Jaguar tank? Thinking about having twenty babies to start. John, I don't, I don't, uh, talking about the Managuins, the Jaguar, man, I don't, you know, if that's really what you want, I think you should do it. I'm not much of a fan of the Jaguar sickle like that to where I would want to occupy a whole 300 gallon with a breeding pair. But if you plan on selling them, 
that might be uh you know it might be some it might be profitable for you basement floods when it rains so the second floor is where it lives fuck damn cody damn can't believe the basement flood when it rains what could you do about that anything damn 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 that's what i'm talking about haps and peacocks yeah 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 no one bonus no one bonus that's what's up that's we on the same page we 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 right here with it we right here with it yeah man that's uh that's almost like the best setup for african cichlids have some peacocks but i'm not gonna i'm gonna be honest with you i'm gonna be honest with all of you i have been wanting to get another african cichlid tank i do i'm kind of itching for it i don't know if i want to do the bonus or trophies i know them bonus are a little little evil man tyrants man i know them bonus are like that you know and i do like the trophies though i do like the trophies but I really, I, I want to start up another African cichlid tank. I really do. And I do want some variety, you know? So I'm kind of, you know, one thing I've noticed about, about like the trophies is that each one is way too expensive. Let's just be real about it. All the ones I've seen, they're like $30, $40 for one. And I'm talking about small. I'm talking about small, right? You know, when I get my, my peacocks, I usually get like three for three for forty. Beyond fair, right? Yeah. So I can't, you know, when I want to go and get ten, I don't want to spend, you know, four hundred dollars on ten fish. If I'm gonna spend four hundred dollars. I'm gonna get something. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get something that I really want. You know what I mean? So I don't know why these. I don't know. Y'all know why these African why these trophies are so expensive? Do y'all experience that? And Cody said the house made in 1950. Yeah. Um, this house, shit. <laughs> let me tell you when this house is uh, when let me tell you when this house was made. Let's see. I should know offhand, but I don't. Let's see. Okay, where is it at? Didn't want to show it there. 1957, Cody, we uh we only, you know, we only seven years older than us. 1957. This motherfucker old as fuck too. John, could I put an Oscar with the jewel cichlids? The size difference might cause issues long term, June. Um, you could when they're small. But Oscars are a bit aggressive. They're a bit aggressive. You know what I mean? I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't do that. Now, that being said, you could probably get like the five star general. Let me let me let me make sure we're on the same page. Let me make sure. Hey, Magic Mike, I love the I love the buddy Carl Fry too. One of my favorite fish. But let me make sure we're on the same page with these jewel cichlids. Let me see. So I I I believe you're talking about the ruby jewel cichlids. All right, there we go. So um, let me make sure we talking about these. Are we talking about these right here? Can you see the color? This is terrible. Damn. Well, they red. Are those the ruby jewel cichlids that you're talking about? If so, you could add those with like the five-star general. Watch these. Look at these. Two different kinds. You got the hemichromis elongatus, and then you got the hemichromis, the smaller version. Look, check it out. Let me show you these real quick, though. So we got a five-star general right here, right? You can add those with the um, jewel cichlids, and we are talking about the same ones. Okay, I, I, I like those ones. I like those a lot. But yeah, these are these are pretty cool if you could get your hands on them. They're they're pretty aggressive. And these are excellent fish for like a 75 gallon. 
And then they got these. These are the ones that I really like. I've been trying to get some of these to grow out with the red bottom. If you ever get time to look online at a video called, um, matter of fact, I, I'm not even tripping. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one, one more time, though. Yeah, they get, they are nice. Ooh, those are nice. So I'm going to show you. It's called, it's, uh, it's like Release Zeus or something like that. I'm going to show you. It's a five-star general hybrid, and it's so aggressive that um, I think it's Zeus Unchained or something like that. Let me see. Um, I might have to probably put in Sigla, too. I might have to put that in to Pan. Uh, hopefully, I can find it real quick. If not, um, it looked like his tank. But if I find it, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, see, what could I, what else could I put? Yeah, I'm not going to find it right now. Damn. Um, nonetheless, this is the first fish. There we go. Zeus Unleashed. Let me, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna show you this shit, man. Let me turn, let me turn down the damn music. I'm gonna show you this. This bad boy right here, y'all. I remember this video is eight years old, but I remember when I seen this video, I couldn't believe that they had a five star general, which is right there at the bottom right there just smashing on it's gonna be it smashes on everything the dove eye the flower horn i don't know if y'all ever seen this video i was kind of mad because all the fish look kind of torn up you know but at the same time that's his tank nonetheless you know that's an amazing big one-of-a-kind five-star general right there now that's kind of that one's kind of boring here we go it's called I Am Zeus. Look, check it out. Hybrid. That's how it look when it's small. And I'm not going to play the whole video. It's, it's four minutes. But watch when it started getting bigger. Crazy. Matter of fact, I did it. I did a, um, and there we go, from Pongi. All the fry. I actually did a reaction video on this thing. Super aggressive. We ain't, we ain't to the aggressive part. Rolling them out. Even as even at a small size, he's already super aggressive. Look at that. That's beautiful. Man. But yeah, so come on now. I'm gonna have to speed it up in a minute. Look at how beautiful those fish are. At a small size, they're super aggressive. Yep, you see that? Look how big it is. Man. Yeah, so when I seen this video eight years ago, I just couldn't believe. Look at look how he was dogging that red. I mean, dogging that flower horn. I just couldn't believe that one of these fish actually existed. I've never seen one. I've been trying to grow them out ever since, but I just cannot find one. And again, I tell you all the time, I like the aggressive fish. Those are the ones that I really. Those are the ones that I really like. But uh. I'm about to stop showing you in a minute just because, uh, yeah, see, look at that. Super aggressive. Now, that's how you see when a fish is um is fighting. That's kind of just him just fighting for it's for uh, from high for hierarchy. And that's a dove eye that he's fighting with right now. And he going to chase off that dove eye. Dove eye don't want no part of him. Uh-huh. Look at that. And not a lot of fish could match the bite, the bite strength of a dove eye. Look, chase them off. I couldn't believe that. The big bad dove eye. But yeah, so um, but he caught fry, scared of him, everybody. So yeah, y'all like, and if y'all want to look it up, it's crazy that he don't really have any subs or anything like that. I'm not going, I'm not a hater at all. I'm gonna let you see who the source is. Man, come on now. Stop fucking around. Damn. Damn. Damn, can't even see it, man. Anyway, it's uh Will 
Lil John. But um, yeah, crazy, 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 beautiful fish. So if you could come across something like that, man, I pay top dollar for that fish. I would probably spend for one like that. I probably would pay at least one hundred and fifty for it. But yeah. Sean, Sean's Aquatic Life. What's up? What got you into fish keeping? What's your dream tank setups? And gals, I um kind of explain this like time and time again, but I'll tell you, Sean, real quick. My mom got me into the hobby. My grandma got my mom into the hobby. And uh, that was at 10 years old. Then at 12, then um, in 2012, I found a dove eye at the fish store. You know, I've never seen a fish that got that big, never seen a fish that you could actually see the teeth and uh, fell in love with the dove eye. You know, that's why the Pericones dove eye is my favorite fish. And, um, you know, ever since then, I've been learning, expanding. Here I am now. My um, dream, you said, what else is my dream? Tank. I pretty much, I've been very, I'm, I'm, I, feel, I feel like I've been very blessed. I'm very humbled and blessed by the fact that I pretty much have my um dream tanks as far as for as far as fresh water um i have all the fish that i've actually ever want there's some that i still want that salt water as far as fresh water the ones that i want now are illegal i would love to have an asian arowana i would love to have an um i would love to have a snakehead and i would definitely love to have a gar but i can't own any of those legally in california none of us could own a um uh, asian arowana in america um, uh, so that would be my, that would be my dream tank. All of those don't have to be together, but if I had those fish, I would love to have that. As far as my dream tank itself, that's hard to, that's hard to imagine, um, uh, because it's really based upon the fish that I'm actually able to keep. If I had a fish warehouse, if I had the space, I would be an Arapaima owner. I would. As you've seen, it wasn't on my list because I could never fathom having a tank where I'm able to keep a 10 foot fish. Then we're talking about dreams. So if I had something like Ohio Fish Rescue, I always give them their credit. Hats off to those guys. You know, I always get in their credit. Never met them, don't know nothing about them, but from what I've seen, like some of y'all, but I always give them their credit because I feel like they do this on the highest scale that I've seen on YouTube. If I had a 56,000 gallon pond or swimming pool that I could convert into a pond, I would. Then I would add some air pima in there. So uh yeah, you know, the sky's the limit. Who knows what's what's in my what's in our future within the next five, ten years. You know what I mean? But um, you know, I'm I'm gonna do what I can to the fullest extent on the highest level. So um I'm gonna transform the eight hundred gallon into a we decided on a twenty two hundred gallon pool for now. Eventually, when the, when when I can, I'll upgrade that to like a three thousand gallon or something like that. The saltwater guys are going to get thirteen hundred gallons. You know, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep on building and expanding. You know what I mean? But as I can, you know, I'm never going to go and try to do this outside of my means. You know what I mean? I'm even going to rebuild the koi pond in the future. You know what I mean? But it just everything is a process. Life is a process, stepping stones. You know, we we can't just just go from start. To be at the finish line, you know, we gotta run this damn race. You know what I mean? We gotta step, we gotta hit the stepping stones sometimes along the way to get across the river. You know, wish we could just jump from one side to the other side. The other times, some of us, we gotta jump on those steps to get to the other side. As long as we get there, it don't matter what kind of path we took to get there. As long as we end up where we wanna be, that's what matters. I don't mind taking a long road, I don't mind taking a hard road. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna get to where the hell I deserve to be, period. All right, Cody, you're uh, at least yours is updated. I was never been updated. It's shit. We trying to find a bigger house anyways. Need a four bedroom. That's right, Cody. I agree. You know, we got it because it was kind of upgraded. We thought this joint was new. They definitely put in a lot of upgrades. Turquoise cichlid. Okay, okay. June, yes. Uh, Cody Miller, I really want to get some aggressive cichlids for the pond, but I don't think, don't, but I don't work out. Then we don't have know where to put them that's our only issue um your fish is gonna eat those eat those cichlids though you got that catfish is gonna eat those cichlids yep 
And no, Cody, we can't own a guard. We can't own a guard, man. We can't own a guard. Want to see the guard that we can't own? I'll show you that. It's really like a kerosene. It's really like a pike. Let me show you the, uh, the guard we can't own. Maybe I could pull it up. All right. Let's see. Like I said, it's really not a guard. Here we go. Here we go. This is what we could own. Watch the nose. Damn, that's a that's a small picture. All right. Um, here we go. Nah, that's still not a good one. Here we anyway. Here, that's what we can own right there. That we could own that South American spotted guard. That's what we could own legally out here. And it's really not a guard. It's not like it's not like this one. That you see that spotted guard. That's totally different. It's not like that one. So, no, we can't own any guard out here, unfortunately. No, Kenneth, nope. No guards, man. No guards. Cody, that's so crazy. It's because they can be an invasive species. Exactly. People are always letting their fish go because they buy them, and then they realize they can't keep them, so they just dump them. You know what I mean? The fish store won't take them, so they release them, and then it becomes a problem. You know, when they don't have natural predators in the, in, the, in the wild, that's the reason why they become invasive and, you know, they become a problem. But it's so weird because some of these fish, like, they're tropical. Like, they need warmer water. So it's like they can't even live in our lakes. You know what I mean? So it's like, come on now. It's almost like a death sentence. But I guess, again, that's inhumane to release it into something that is a death sentence. Rock, what's up? What's up? TB, what's happening? What's happening? But oh, one day they allow trusted fish keepers to have some of the other species of snakehead they have in the same colors. I agree, TB. But if you decide to apply for a restricted fish license, you know, you could do that and then you could potentially own them. The only thing is um, it's a lot of hurdles to jump over. And sometimes it's worth it. And sometimes it's like not even worth it. They stay in your business. You know, they got to constantly do routine checks to make sure that you're keeping them the way that you said you're going to be keeping them. They want to know um, um, emergency procedures. What would you do if it escaped? Well, a fish is going to die if it escaped. If it jump out the, you know, jump out the water source, it's going to die, right? Unless you have it next to like um, a creek or something, and that leads to somewhere else. You know, then that's that's the reason why they do these like these checks and things like that. But I've thought about I thought about applying for a restricted species license. There's some that make me want to do it. You know, the snakehead is one. You know, they will say, well, basically ask, um, um, what do you plan on doing with it? What's the purpose of you actually owning one? So if you stand for educational purposes, you know, that's in your favor. If you, um, they're gonna ask you how long have you been working with that with that particular species? A lot of times, like we don't have no experience with it because how can we experience with keeping it if we if they're illegal right so that might be a problem but again a lot of times they will work with you you know they're going to make sure that you have the correct um tank parameters for it and things like that so they do work with you you know it's just whether or not you really feel like it's worth it whether or not you really want to put the time and effort into you know keeping something that's going to cause someone to constantly be in your business and you know with a checklist oh he's doing this he's not doing this he's doing, you know what i mean like yeah all right, all right. But yeah, so man, I gotta feed some fish tonight. Do I gotta feed fish? I usually feed my fish every other day. How often do y'all feed y'all fish? Y'all predators? Y'all feed them every day? I don't feed mine every day. Yeah, that's 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 a bit much. You know, in the wild they don't eat every day. Yeah, not a catfish won't eat them. We have a long ear sunfish in a pond that's not. That has not been eaten by the bass or catfish. He actually will stay beside the catfish for protection and will bully the bass. Hey man, they don't eat your fish until they don't eat your fish until they eat your fish. Man, I tell you like this: I had a tiger shovel nose catfish hybrid. It wasn't that much bigger than the dovi he ate. They were living together for a long time, buddy, buddy. One day, he just didn't like the fact that the bass that the, the dovi swam over him. And he ate them like this. It was no saving them. It was a done deal in one goal. So I don't hope that don't happen with yours. But all I'm saying is that when you got a big catfish, 
you never know what that catfish is thinking. It's cool until it's not cool. And even the other fish won't even know that it's all bad. You know, they'll think that it's good. They chill right next to him like it's cool, like he's been doing every other day for the past two years. All of a sudden, the catfish want to want to have a larger snack. But hopefully that don't happen with you, though. I feed every other day, and sometimes I skip two days. That's right, Rock. Me too. Yeah, that's right. The only fish that typically eats every day right now is my stingray and then also my tiger fish. My tiger fish got to eat every day. That thing every day is looking hungry, you know, and that's because they burning off those calories constantly swimming. At least I don't have to pay. At least I ain't have to pay for the fish. <laughs> yeah, Cody, but if you get those cichlids, if you get those cichlids, you're going to have to pay for them. So, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's funny, though. Man, I hope, I hope, I hope I do get some um, get some native fish to throw outside. I hope I do. I'm a little nervous about that pond, though. I don't know how I could protect that pond outside like that. You know, I got to figure that part out. You know what I mean? I got to figure that part out. How could I protect that pond? And it might end up being green. So I probably won't have any kind of pond outside with the fish. Only way I could do that is if I had it covered up, right? So I don't have also don't turn into green water. Yeah. Am I going to do a lot of small fish or big fish? Man, I wanted a bass, man. I wanted a bass, man. I, I, I really wanted either I was going to go with native fish in my pond, and then all of a sudden I start seeing koi, and I was like, damn, I could see these from the from inside the house. So that's why I went with koi. So I would rather do. I would rather do bass, man. I would rather do bass. I would rather have some bass. I would rather do the native fish. You know, that way I got some exciting feeding videos like how you be having. You know what I mean? So I would rather do like the, the larger fish, not the small ones. The smaller ones, you know. But yeah, got to figure that out. Definitely going to figure that out. All right, well, look, y'all, we've been doing this for about an hour and 52 minutes now, going on almost two hours. Attach some sunscreen to the house and get two six-foot poles and put it in the ground and attach two under them, attach it in. Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. We're going to talk more about that, Cody. Once we set up that, switch out that 800-gallon, we'll talk more about it. I'm going to get your feedback. I'm going to get all y'all feedback. We're going to figure this out together. But look. This chair is so uncomfortable, and we've been doing this for almost two hours, so I appreciate each and every single one of y'all that has contributed to the topic. It's been real. It's always real. It's been real. And, um, man, I'm going to have to catch y'all on the next one. Probably do it tomorrow. More than likely, I'll just do it tomorrow. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a great night. I'm catching the next one. Peace. All right, Cody.